My name is Gabe. I'm representing Maxible here. I'll introduce myself a little bit more. Um, but Maxible is committed to, to helping you maximize use and uh, utility of your home. And so ADUs are the primary way that we do that. They are an incredible tool uh, for, you know, in so many ways uh, for maximizing the value of your home. Uh, we're going to talk all about ADUs here. I know probably a lot of you started this year with a resolution to build an ADU or at least take the next steps on that. We're here to help and this webinar is the right way to kick it off. So just a quick overview of what we're going to cover over the next 60 minutes. First, I'll introduce myself. We're going to talk about defining your ADU goals. We're going to talk about research and why it's so important to understand sort of as legislation, especially in California, where most participants on this webinar are from and most of our sort of content is focused on. Roughly 60, 70 percent of Maxible clients and, uh, and sort of traffic on our YouTube channel and, and, uh, and on our website are from California. That's why we focus in on California. And most of our examples will be from San Diego area, LA County, the Bay Area, Sacramento. I saw a few. Um, so we'll talk a lot about research. We'll talk about uh, some of the options you have. Custom building and ADU, stick built, that we call it, or we frequently call it, versus prefab, which would often be built in a factory. We'll talk through financing. We'll, you know, So how do you pay for this ADU? What are the cash flow dynamics? We'll talk about finding your designer, why it's so important to find the, uh, the, uh, an experienced ADU designer specifically. And we'll talk about next steps, we'll talk, and then we'll end with why you need to start in 2023 or why it's such a great year to get started on your ADU project. And then we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. So please use the chat room there uh, to, to surface some questions. Thank you for the participants here who submitted questions. Uh, before the webinar, I think during registration, we have answers to all of those and we'll sort of queue those up um, and hope to cover a lot of them in the actual presentation. That's what we're going to cover today. So first, who am I? Uh, my name is Gabe Blanchett. I've been leading product and technology at Maxible and I'm actually psyched to announce that I'm going to be taking the reins from uh, Caitlin, who's moving on uh, as CEO of Maxible. So Really excited to help as many homeowners as possible build ADUs. And most notably for me, I love ADUs. I have an ADU in my backyard, and I'll tell you, it has changed my uh, sort of financial and even practical life. Um, building an ADU was an exciting, an exciting time for me and my wife. Um, now we rent it out in the backyard, and it offsets most of our mortgage. And we've also developed great friendships. Um, so uh, it was it was a ground up ADU. You see it there. Uh, we're, we're actually doing some renovation to the kitchen in that shot. That's my wife, um, and we did a lot of the work to it ourselves, which is you know different. Everybody's going to come at this from a bit of a different angle. Um, there's there's the outside. Um, so I have a lot of personal experience with ADUs. I, I also have a, a, another property that we converted to a duplex and. I'm just really passionate about helping homeowners and invest, investors maximize their properties by building their own ADUs. You'll start to see me popping up on Maxwell's YouTube channel. Like that's me right there uh, explaining permits. Um, I actually have a permit set that we talk about right here. Um, and I've done a few videos with Caitlin. Um, so you'll start seeing me pop up on that YouTube channel quite a bit more. So now let's get into the actual content here. What are the five steps to starting your ADU this year? Step number one, define your ADU goals. Now, most home, most, the most common reasons homeowners want to build an ADU, number one, housing for family. We see this all the time where it's either, you know, younger, your children or often elderly folks, um, whether, they're, you know, often parents. And trying to live in a multi-generational setting on one property is cost-effective, creates some separation in living, but you're still right there together. Number two, passive rental income. That's what I use my ADU for. We'll go over some examples in this webinar here. Uh, number three, office space. Pandemic has been a tough few years uh, for many people. And even though that maybe the pandemic is over or sort of, you know, waning in some ways, a lot of people are still working remotely. We see people using extra space outside of their main home on their property as office space. And we'll actually look at one example of uh, someone who made an office but had long-term vision and plans 
So they added a bathroom, a bedroom, et cetera, used it as an office and then converted it to a full ADU. So you always have to be thinking short and long term. Uh, number four is downsizing. See a lot of people moving out of their main house into a newly constructed, you know, brand new, beautiful ADU, and then rent out the main home, either to family or for passive income. So if you're thinking any of these ideas, this webinar is for you. Um, and I think that covers most of uh, the use cases for ADUs. Your intended use. So when you're thinking about, okay, how am I going to take the next steps on building this ADU? Your intended use for the ADU is going to play a big part in the design of the ADU. So for example, if you're building for passive rental income, you're going to want to do things like incorporate separate electric meters. You're going to want to choose durable finishes because you're going to have new tenants in there from, or renters from time to time. If you're building for elderly family, for example, think about how you can make it as accessible and comfortable for them as they age. We're thinking wider doorways, lower countertops, no thresholds between different rooms and different areas. If you're planning on downsizing and moving into the ADU yourself, don't be afraid to really make it your own. Uh, if you've always dreamed about having something like a, you know, a lofted bedroom, there's no better investment than, than what you want and in yourself. Um, so it's so important to think about not just the short-term goals, what I want this for right now, but your long-term goals. Um, what are you going to be using this ADU for in four or five or 10 or 15 years? Here's a good example. A client of ours, uh, Felicia, originally wanted to convert her garage into ADU for rental income. Just a few weeks before the ADU was set to be completed, her mom expressed that she'd love to move back to San Diego, but didn't see that being a possibility for various reasons. Rather than renting out that, uh, rather than renting out the ADU, finding a renter through, uh, you know, a rental rental site. Uh, Felicia realized that her new ADU was perfect, home, the perfect home for her mom. She surprised her mom with the proposition and her mom happily accepted. So this is a good example of maybe you design it with one use in mind and life happens, things change. Uh, and you, you know, having that flexibility built into the design is so important. Another example, a psychologist built an office as an ADU. Um, he, he and his wife thought ahead and they decided to build the full ADU. So when they retire, they intend to use this ADU to house their caregiver, someone on their property who can take care of them in the main home. Now, it's so important to have the first step be understanding your needs and wants because in the design process, you're going to start to cement some of these decisions. Once you do that, small changes like moving a window or a door require your designer or architect to go through the whole permitting process over again can take many months depending on your county or your planning and zoning department. It's just not worth it. So measure twice, cut once while building an ADU. That's why we do what we do at Maxible. That's why we produce all these, uh, the blog posts, the videos uh, that get you know millions of views a year. Um, it's, it's to help people with the planning process that, that when they approach that designer, when they approach that general contractor, talk to that prefab company, they actually know, they come in educated. They know what they're uh, you know, what they've already thought through, their finances, what they want, et cetera. So what are your goals during the ADU process? This is going to be different for all 100, 150 of you. How important is quick construction for you? What's your deadline and what drives that deadline for completion? How involved do you want to be in the process? We have everybody from, I just want people to take care of it all, including, you know, uh, proposing the design based on my needs all the way to, I'd like to you know, be involved with, uh, with some of the trades. I, I love installing flooring. So it really runs the gamut uh, of how involved people wanna be in the process. So questions like these heavily influence your, your build type. That'll bring us to our next step, which is let's get into the actual research phase. First, you're, you're on a great start. You're on this webinar. This is a great start to understand some of the steps to build your ADU. Let's see. It, when you're thinking about research, there's a lot of different angles. One of those angles is legislation. What are you allowed to build in your area? And this is, this is one of the reasons that I'm really excited to, to lead Maxible through this phase. Legislation is changing so fast, especially in the state of California, uh, both in different municipalities, but as a whole, uh, state California is moving. Uh, and then in, in other places, I saw some folks on here from Texas, I saw in Arizona, I saw a few on the East Coast, I saw Denver. Um, so it's all of these states, they are thinking, not just states, but municipalities are thinking about 
how to empower more AD, more homeowners to build ADUs. Because everyone realizes it's really the missing middle of housing that will help build better neighborhoods, better communities, solve part of this housing crisis. In California specifically, I'm not going to go into all of these in details, but what you need to know is that there's a series of bills coming out of the state legislature that are significantly impacting what you can build, you know, how long it takes uh, to, to get a permit, and what... Um, Really, the state is essentially restricting the local capability of, of restricting ADUs. So they're paving the way for more people to be able to build this great housing type. Um, we're really excited about this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dial in on two of these in particular during, just right now. Um, one of these is uh, there has been a grant program available, available to homeowners called CalHFA or CalHFA. And this has been up to $40,000 per homeowner. Uh, the funding was tapped out in November, the first tranche of funding. Now, so if you start an AD right now, you are not guaranteed by any stretch to get any additional funding or, um, or grant money from the state of California. However, uh, however, we are, see, by July 1st of this year, the, the, a working group is convening and proposing to the legislature essentially what is Cal CalHAPA step two? What is the next phase of this program? There was so much demand for it from so many homeowners across the state over the past year that all the funding got tapped out. How are we gonna move this forward? So Maxwell is gonna be involved in those discussions. Uh, we're, we're really looking forward to see what comes out of that on July 1st and we'll keep you apprised. So that's SB 157. Uh, the next one I'll talk about is height restrictions. Um, we are seeing new heights allowed, um, and that, that allows you to build interesting, um, you know, build in more places and build more dynamic designs. In all of California, an ADU that can be built on a single-family home lot or even a duplex, or there's, there's a lot of other uh, sort of multifamily options for building ADUs, must be allowed to be six, 16 feet tall. Then there's an additional nuance. It must be allowed to be 18 feet tall if the structure is close to public transit, or if it, there's already a multifamily dwelling that's two stories high. At 18 feet, you can fit two stories worth, uh, or two levels onto an ADU. So we're really excited to see this legislation in California. This is gonna allow a lot more ADUs, uh, two-story ADUs to be built. And then if you're building an attached ADU, an ADU that's actually connected to your main uh, dwelling, your primary dwelling, you can build up to 25 feet. Uh, or whatever the underlying zoning code of the property is, but most are at least 25 feet or more. Um, so whichever one is the lowest will apply. So this is really exciting. We're going to see a lot more uh, two-level ADUs because of this legislation. So once you've done, so research entails figuring out what you can build. So now number one, you figured out what you've, you've really thought through what your needs are, short-term and long-term. You've looked at the legislation, which I gave you a snapshot of here, Obviously, look at a lot of our, our YouTube content, our blog content. We're always keeping up to date on what the latest, latest legislation is. What's next? Well, next, you've got to actually think about how, what, what building style do I want? So the big decision is, do I want to build a custom unit, a stick-built unit, uh, we often call it, or do I want to go with a prefabricated unit? So let's start by busting a myth. There's a, there's a myth out there that if you go prefab because it's built in a factory like a car or you know, it is going to be cheaper, both in terms of build quality and price. That is false. Let's take a look at an example. So we often see pre, prefab ADUs in the 250K range. Now note that is not just the unit, that is transportation, installation, site work, et cetera. For custom ADUs, we often see ADUs starting at about $200,000. The average as of a year and a half ago was $180,000. We haven't seen the updated numbers, but from, from all of the homeowners who use Maxible to refer them to general contractors and designers and other ADU professionals, we see that it's risen a little bit and we're around $200,000. That's the starting cost with no crazy bells and whistles. So for prefab, how does this, you know, you look at some of the prefab companies' websites and it says starts at $105,000, starts as low as $50,000. How does this become this? Well, let's look at a cost breakdown. So here's a cost breakdown going from $105,000 unit price. When you add in permits and plans, site prep and foundation work, 
So that's the concrete on which they put the prefab unit. Utilities, utility connections for electricity, for sewer, for water, and the fees for delivery and installation, depending on how far you are from the factory, if your site has any uh, you know, considerations that make it more challenging to put this unit on, we're all the way up to 250,000. So if prefab costs the same as stick built, what is the real benefit? The main benefit in going with prefab over stick built is time and less construction on your property. Prefab units generally can be installed a lot faster and you can have either rental income or family moving in or whatever your needs are for, you know, the reason that you're building an ADU can be satisfied in less time often, almost in almost all cases with prefab units. That's because they're less customizable. And so in some jurisdictions, they are, they are part of a pre-approved plan set. So you're going to get permits much faster if you're using a prefab unit. And then furthermore, they're already built in a factory. And so there is still work to be done and leveling and foundation work and utility work. But that uh, prefab unit comes in either on a crane or rolled off the end of a truck, um, you know, carefully. <laughs> um, they're very, it's very methodical, but essentially put in in one big Lego piece. Uh, and that, that can save months off of construction time. Construction time is an issue, but so is having contractors and subcontractors milling about your property, coming in and out of the gate, uh, potentially having to use your bathroom. Often they'll set up a porta potty. But there's all this. Uh, there's a lot going on when your home, is, your backyard, is a construction site. So let's take a look at what that actually means. Prefab ADU often once you're permitted, which still take we takes weeks to months, often months. Uh, a prefab ADU can often be installed in a week to a month. Whereas a stick-built ADU, which is more, more customizable, can really fit your, your property perhaps better, uh, can take up to eight to 10 months for construction to take place. So both custom and stick-built and prefab are great options. We, we see homeowners really thrilled with both options. I will say, you know, there's a perception that Prefab means, you know, modular homes from the 1970s, uh, really cheaply built. That's just not the case anymore. Some of these prefab, most of the prefab companies, or I would say some and many, do your research and, and use maximal sources. But, um, but most of these companies are using, you know, they're all doing it to code, uh, or I will say anybody that we will refer to is doing it to code and using high quality construction methods. They still have to ship it. And so there's a lot, a lot more engineering design that comes into that, uh, you know, coming down the road on the back of a truck. Uh, but these are not the manufactured homes of the of the 60s, 70s, 80s. These are uh, these are up to date, up to code homes, and they're beautiful. Uh, we also see people thrilled with stick built. You know, that when you see people framing a new building, that's often done using stick built methods. That's what we're talking about. Um, so it really comes down to personal preference and what are your wants and needs? What's, what are your needs for timeline? How do you think about cost? Uh, Maxwell resources are there to help you sort of make this decision. And you should also you know, consider speaking with both prefab and design and general contractor options. Do you want to talk a little bit about a, a bonus option, an option that not a lot of homeowners are used to? It's really emerging on the scene as a middle ground between that custom and prefab offering. And this is panelized prefab. So this essentially means that panels, you can think of them almost as Lego pieces, are built in the factory to a certain specification. And then those panels are usually flat packed on the back of a truck, brought to your property and installed. Think of it like pieces of a wall coming together. Now, of course, it's more than just walls. They've got to think through how the electrical cables run, uh, how the plumbing runs, all insulation, all of these things. But you can think about it essentially as panels coming in. Uh, this can lead to sort of a middle ground where you're customizable in terms of your footprint and where the windows are and all of these things. Uh, but it's also got some speed advantages over, you know, stick built from the ground up. Awesome. Just going to look a little bit at the questions here. All right. Great. All right, so we've talked about steps one through three. We talked about your options, custom to prefab, to this middle ground of panelized prefab. The next thing, the next step here, number four, is to get pre-qualified. 
we have seen the last thing you want to do is spend months going down the design phase, thinking about prefab versus custom, doing all this research and regulations, and then find out you can't secure financing for your project or the financing you can secure is at an interest rate that you can't afford. Um, there are a lot of options for financing, but getting pre-qualified as early as possible gives you the peace of mind and the confidence to move forward with a designer with all of your with all your options. So what happens if you don't qualify for financing? The challenge here is that most people wait until after they've submitted their plan sets to start looking into financing. What's the risk with that? The risk is that design fees are often in the range of eight to $20,000. And then permitting with your municipality is often also between eight and $12,000. More if you live in a coastal overlay district or have you know, specific requirements, or if you go over 750 square feet in the state of California, then impact fees apply. So, there's, so we're giving a broad range because of that. But that means that if you don't get financing after you've done all this work, you're at $16,000 to $32,000 down the drain if you can't secure that financing. So now, now that we're talking a little, now that we're you know, hopefully scaring you with the, the risks of not figuring out how much you can actually spend early in your process, let's take a step back and look at the actual sort of cash flow and, uh, and building cost dynamics in, we'll start with Southern California. So there's a lot on this slide. We've essentially, we're looking at th uh, four different size ADUs, everything from a garage conversion to a two or three bedroom, 1200 square foot, almost as big as a primary residence, um, but you can build an ADU of that size. We're looking at the hard costs. We're looking, and then we're gonna look at how much does it, at, on a monthly basis, once it's built, how much does your loan cost? How much can you rent it for if that's your goal? And therefore, what is your cash flow? So let's look just at the 550 uh, square foot one bedroom line, that second line. There. In this example, the hard costs start at or were $240,000. So using if you finance that on a 30 year loan at a 6.6% .6 interest rate, which is roughly what we're seeing these days, uh, obviously much worse than what we saw two years ago, but going down slightly from the highs a few months ago. Uh, the monthly loan payment on that is $1,533. That's how much you'll pay to the bank every month for 30 years. But in Southern California, in this example, the market rate for that unit, that one bedroom is $2,300. So when you subtract the market rate, the market rent from the monthly loan, you end up with a positive cash flow of $767 per month for building this ADU. If you look at all the examples here for Southern California and all the examples we're about to show in the Bay Area, they're all cash flow positive. And that's why this is an incredible uh, move that you can take as a homeowner or an investor is to start building your first ABU and then maybe more ABUs either on your property or, you know, I know we've got a lot of investors uh, looking to take advantage of this as well. It's because you cannot find this type of uh, this type of cash flow positive investment in real estate in many areas. Um, ADUs are a unique and special opportunity right now because of their limited cost and ability to command market rents. Looking in the Bay Area, let, now let's look at the at the two bedroom there. Um, so hard costs in the Bay Area, we do find are higher than in uh, than San Diego, LA County, et cetera, but so is market rent. So for that two bedroom, 750 square feet, you didn't have to pay impact fees because you, you went, went just the 750 square feet limit. Uh, you're looking at a monthly loan payment, same loan terms of $2,250. The market rent for this two bedroom right in the Bay Area is, is, is uh, $3,500. So market rent minus monthly loan payment, you're looking at a positive cash flow per month of twelve of $1,250. So this cash flow positive dynamic is what you're looking for if you're uh, if you're you know if you're in it for the um, for the passive income. Now let's talk a little bit about your financing options. Obviously, if you have cash, uh, then you can just just pay for this service and pay for ADUs outright. Uh, but not everybody has or wants to liquidate hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we often see, uh, you know, and Maxwell is not a lender. Um, we do know lenders. We're happy to connect you with lenders who focus in these areas. So the three options that we often see here are cash out refinances, home equity line of credits, and renovation loans. 
you can see some of the nuances with each of these. I won't dive into them during this webinar for the sake of time. So once you've figured out the, the financial aspects of building an ADU, that was number four. Getting pre-qualified really allows you to put together your own either Excel spreadsheet or just a simple model to show what you expect to pay every month, you know, your, your rent or your income uh, or the value of it to you minus that monthly loan amount. That's your cash flow. So get pre-approved. Moving on to number five, you are now ready to find your ADU designer. So why is a good ADU designer specifically with an emphasis on ADU so important? Well, that's because despite design costs being a relatively small portion of your budget, roughly 8% of your overall budget is what we see, your designer has a major impact on the rest of the, of the pie there. Your designer has a major impact on the cost overall. And that's because it's more than just a floor plan. Here, so let's go through everything your ADU designer is responsible for. They're responsible for checking for feasibility of your site and of your design intent, what you need, to, what you need this ADU to, to do for you. Utility connections, setbacks, potential complications from power lines and other utilities, unpermitted work, we see this very frequently, and then easements. So all of these factors, yeah, and that, so all of these factors mean that someone who's focused their career or at least has a lot of reps on doing ADU-specific design will be much better for your project than just a general architect. Even if they've, got, they've done beautiful, large, you know, single-family homes, multifamily homes, that doesn't necessarily translate to being a great ADU designer. The ADU designer will be responsible for producing a full set of construction drawings. I actually have a packet right here. I think it's in the range of 28 pages long. Um, and it's often printed on much larger paper, uh, but I printed this out just to show you all of these steps that an ADU designer, all of these different drawings from the, uh, you know, from the demolition plans, interior elevations, exterior elevations, um, structural design, Title 23, all sorts of uh, title, yeah, all sorts of uh, you know, paperwork that it, that are the full set of construction drawings that get submitted to the. Um, submitted to the city. An ADU designer who has a lot of experience will not, will not have to go through sort of endless redlining and back and forth with the city because they've done this and they know what the city expects from them. Which brings us to our last point here of a great ADU designer has submitted to the city before and often has personal relationships with the, with the plan set reviewers. And this is important because, especially in the state of California, the state is implementing these new regulations on a statewide basis, these new, these new, new legislation. We just went over some of it. But some of the city planning and zoning departments aren't keeping up to date uh, with some of the new, the new legislation. And so if you need an advocate. Your, your ADU designer has to advocate, hey, we can go up to that height because of this new statewide legislation. And so often we see the role of the ADU designer actually to push the city to adopt what is actually feasible and legal to build. So what are some of the green flags, the things you wanna look for in an, when you're selecting an ADU designer? And this extends to prefab as well. We're, you know, when we talk about ADU designer, we're often talking about someone who's coming from, you know, gonna work with you from the ground up uh, to either modify a plan set or build one from scratch. But the same things apply if you're approaching a prefab company. A green flag is that they are communicative. They're asking you these types of questions. Who and what are you building for? What are your goals? Where do you wanna place it? And most importantly, what is your construction budget? There's nothing more heartbreaking than reviewing these GC bids and realizing the construction is going to be way over budget, then you've got to go all the way back to square one. Designing an ADU is a niche type of architecture. If you see someone's built an awesome 6,000 square foot home, that has little bearing on how they're going to uh, be able to design for the ADU specific use case. Your, a green flag is looking for an ADU designer with a great track record with the city. This means it's a good indication that they've got strong understanding of the regulations. They understand the permitting process. They can give you a more accurate timeline, which helps everybody downstream, especially the general contractor and builder. And they know how to put together a flawless permit set that's going to get 
approved by the city either the first time or sometimes we see one quick revision. That's what you want in a, an ADU designer. Now, there's only so much we can cover in one hour. I mean, we could talk about ADUs all year long, and we actually do talk about ADUs all year long. So subscribe to our YouTube channel for a lot more information on each of the topics that I've discussed now. But in, one hour, in a one hour session, there's only so much we can cover.